Like you said up there, you don't want to wait till you're in your 30s or whatever to fight this guy. Uh, I can't worry about it, man. Okay. You know, I got to focus on my legacy. And, uh, you know, my legacy is fighting the best fighters out there. So if I can't get that fight, then I'm going to go get another fight. So, I mean, I'm not going to wait on it. I mean, and like he's Floyd Mayweather somewhere, I just got to wait on him. Okay. So, now, I, I'm not going to make you put them in order, but you said Peterson's in your top five. Um, who else will be in that top five with the Walter Wade? Uh, I mean, Terrence Crawford haven't fought yet, so... Uh, you can't put him there yet? He hasn't fought yet, okay. so how are you going to put him there? Makes sense, makes yet. sense, all right. So, I, I got, I mean, no order, just Keith, yeah, no order. Danny, Lamont, Sean Porter, and me. All right, makes sense, makes sense. Um, they spoke a little bit about the size up there. We've seen Peterson, um, you know, be knocked out by Matisse, etc. Um, is that kind of your game plan to go in there and maybe blitz him the same way like other power punchers have in the past? Nah. Or do you think you're just gonna, you know, be nah. more strategic at first? Uh, I don't know. It just depends on how I'm feeling, and how the fight's going, and what I'm feeling in the first round. We'll see. What are you expecting from his side? Uh, are you expecting, you know, the boxing Lamont Peterson or the one that kind of, you know, brings you into a brawl at the end like he did with Danny Garcia, but that kind of worked outside of his favor? Uh, I don't know what to expect. It's just to get ready for everything. Uh, you know, Lamont, he's gonna, I just know he's going to come to fight. So whether if it's on the inside or the outside, or we'll make adjustments to when the fight comes. How does it feel now, man? I remember uh, seeing you when you were like, 14 and 0, 13 and 0. Now yeah. you're like pound for pound on everybody's yeah. list. It's like everywhere. Is that has that changed your perspective? Do you wake up a little bit better in the morning now? Is oh, it changed my perspective. Yeah. I mean, you still gotta make weight and things like yeah. that. So <laughs> I, I still wake up, <laughs> wake up the same. But uh, training camp's going 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 great. You know, I'm hungry. You know, and I'm willing to get more titles. So I mean, my mission's not complete. You know, the, you know, the goal was to win the title, but the ultimate goal is to win multiple titles. Okay, so. With that said, that means like you unifying the titles is like really important to you more than the, your pound for pound status, correct? Definitely. I mean, I think you get the pound for pound status. I mean, status too by unifying the titles. So, I mean, that adds in with the pound for pound fighting the champions and beating them. So, I mean, that's what I want to do: fight champions and beat them. You have a bargaining chip. You have the IBF title. You know, um, what's it gonna take to get those other champions in the ring with you? Do you have to look bad against somebody, or like, do you just look too good? And, like, is it a double-edged sword? Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, you look too good, nobody wanna fight you. I mean, so you look bad, everybody call you out. So if I look bad, this fight and still win, I'm sure everybody, you know, somebody, you know. For the basis. So we'll see. Okay. I gotta ask you, um, this video went kind of viral. No Floyd no hitting the, the heavy okay. back, throwing that jab out there. Yeah. It was like a whip. And then, like two days ago, said uh, Floyd's coming back for a 51st fight. He shut those rumors down, but he shut those rumors down before in the past. Do you think there's a chance for Floyd to come back for another fight if the price is right, or I mean, Floyd, is he you never, another one on us? With Floyd, you Still, never know, man. I one mean, more you, and then head you never know, with Floyd. So he could come back. He might not. I mean, with Floyd, it's just it's a toss up. I mean, it's on him. Does that give you a little bit of like, you know what? Let me put on a show, make my name a little bit bigger, so I can be put in the running just in case he does come back. Oh well, nah. I mean, you know, I'm gonna do what I do always. You know, whether he comes or he doesn't come back. You know, I want to look great anyway. So I want to look great, put on a great performance and a great show. Uh, last but not least. Um, I think that's pretty much it, man. That's a good Errol Spence. Errol Spence, is uh, Lamont Peterson the toughest opponent up to date? Um, you know, that's, that's a hard question. I mean, it's a hard question to answer because, you know, every, you know, until you get into the fight, you know, that guy might be your toughest fight. I mean, I might fight you know, Joe Blow, and he gave me a hell of a fight, and that's my toughest fight to date. So, I mean, he is up there in the top two with him and Kel Brook, resume-wise and on paper-wise. It's sad that we have Miguel Cotto fighting his last fight. You know, there was rumors about you being offered that fight. Yeah. Is there any sense of, uh, not regret, but, you know, are you kind of upset that you won't have the opportunity to face him moving forward after this fight? Uh, nah, no sense of regret. I mean, you know, it's, it's cool to fight somebody. I, I'm willing to fight him, but, you know, it's a business thing at the end of it, too. So, I mean, I'm not, you know, signing away any promoting anything just to fight a guy. Nah. Is that what happened, like, with Mikey Garcia? He said that they, um, they only would give him the fight if it was like a two or three fight deal. Yeah, something like that. Other fighters have also retired. 2017, we have Juan Manuel Marquez and Timothy Bradley. Like, yeah. how would you fare against those guys? You know, now that they're retired, you know, how would you fare with them? 
Like, well, right now? Yeah, let's say right now. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that would be a great fight. Marquez, you know, a guy that I watch, um, watch a lot. Um, he's very, he has fundamentals. You know, tough fighter, you know, all-time great, you know, fighter. 2017 has been a great year of boxing. Out of all the matches that happened this year, which one has been your favorite? Well, probably Earl Smith versus Kev Brooks. That was a good fight. Can, can you tell us why, like, the meaning of that fight and um, so on? Yeah, the whole meaning of it. I mean, me going across seas, you know, to fight in Sheffield and the guy's hometown, you know, he's the champion. You know, me being, you know, Olympian and, you know, most of the guys that get the title handed to them, they don't have to go across seas if you, you know, prosper good a year and things like that, they give you the title, basically. Does that, does that motivate you even more, let's say Jeff Horns continues to you know, keep the WBO what's with title yeah. and you fight in Australia, would you, would you do that even though you fought in England? Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what's going on. It depends on the business and things like that. What I go over there. It's a lot of different things just, just instead of just fighting, you know, it's, it's a business thing too. So. It all depends. Does that make it impossible to unify? I mean, because Terrence Crawford is supposed to fight Jeff Horn. Let's assume Terrence Crawford wins. How does that super mega fight, because everyone wants to see, you know, you guys being in the ring together, ever happen if Terrence Crawford is the top ranked fighter? Who pulls who to whose side? Do you, you fight on ESPN over there? or? Mm, like I said, it's business. I mean, my manager has talked to his people and, you know, see how, you know, how, how things shake out. But at the end of the day, it's business. Of course, you know, the boxers, we want to fight each other. But at the end of the day, you know, it has to make sense. It does make sense, but business-wise, it has to make sense, too. As a fighter, I think looking forward, like, that's the it mega fight. I was yeah. talking to you about that fight since he was at 140 a long time yeah, that's ago. That's a good fight. I don't think anyone wants to see a Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather kind of situation happen. Could you put your foot in there like, okay, I, I've got to make this happen if he becomes champ, etc., and people start demanding it? But definitely, like I said, I want to fight the champion. So, I mean, if he get a belt, you know, that was somebody that I'd be interested in and would want to fight. So, I mean, like I said, I have no picks about who I fight, you know, especially if they have a title. And if I manage to come with me, hey, Terrence Crawford, we got this opportunity. Let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, that's all that needed to be said and done. You expect him to beat Horn when they, because that's set up for them to fight, obviously. He's the yeah. mandatory. You expect him to beat Horn when they fight? Yeah, I expect him to beat Horn. I mean, Terrence Crawford, you know, he can fight. I mean, Jeff Horn, he can fight too, but I think Terrence Crawford is skill wise and he's just above. He's better than Jeff Horn, so I expect him to beat. Jeff Horn, I don't see Ty Rank putting, you know, their, their future star in there, you know, just to lose to, you know, Jeff Horn. We were here a couple months ago, last month I guess it was, and Keith said that he needs to establish himself at, to make himself relevant. At, that's the word he used, relevant yeah. at 147. What, what is your opinion of that? How do you feel about that? I don't know, man. Keith Thurman just been talking to me. I don't, I don't understand what he said. He said I'd make myself relevant. He said I haven't done anything. You know, I got a title now. And it's another excuse. So. I, mean, I can't worry about that. I got Lamar Peterson to worry about. But last week, I know you're going to have a Peterson fight to focus on, but last week on TV on the FS1 broadcast, Thurman said, now he's thinking about fighting in 2019. What was it? Did you hear? Obviously, you heard about it. Yeah, I heard about it. I mean, that's, that's what he said. I mean, you can't make somebody fight you. So, I mean, I'm not going to be just hollering his name every time, you know, I see him on a big screen like he's, you know, Floyd Mayweather or something. Like he just can't have that's not the case at all. So I'm going to keep doing me. You know, I might have a legacy that you know, I want to be you know, Everybody knows that I want to fight the best and I'm willing to fight the best. You know, so it's on him. Do you, do you think he's going to try to do that, though, to prolong it to 2019 if he has his pick? If he has his I mean, he said it, so I mean, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> were, did you, were you here when, uh, when Lamont fought Danny Garcia? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was here. Did, did you, who did you think won that fight and why? Um, that was a close fight, man. You know, um, I, I see that either draw or, or Lamont won, but if you see that draw, it can go either way, too. So. I mean, it was a close fight, man. I think Lamont would have picked up a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think he would have won the fight, but it was a close fight. I thought it could have been a draw. Yeah. Brian was saying up there that you know when the welterweights get mentioned, generally he is he's mentioned last year, you know whatever. But do you think he's an underrated fighter? He's been a lot of well, he just mentioned last because you know Lamont is the type of guy he fight and then he goes back and holds. You know, so he's not a guy that you know he comes to fight. You know he's not on his. He's on Instagram and Twitter and stuff, but he's not on Instagram trying to act like that. You know, he's not in the public like that, so a lot of people kind of, 
know, forget about him. He only pops up when, when he fights. But he is underrated, though, in the, in the people's eyes. But people know he can fight, because even with, when people find out that I'm fighting Lamont, you know, on Twitter, Instagram, you know, it's a lot of people that say, you know, it's a 50-50 fight. So. Um, well, your last fight, Kel Brook talked a lot of trash, you know, yeah. chocolate brownies and all kinds of crazy things. Were saying. He doesn't say anything. Yeah. To, not just to you, but to anybody virtually. Yeah. He doesn't say anything. How does that make it for you? Yeah. Does that matter at all? Does it, does it help sometimes the guy talks some trash and gets on your skin? No, it doesn't matter to me at all. I don't focus on if a guy trash, talking trash or not. I mean, of course, it probably is. Give you different emotions when a guy talking trash, like I'm trying to knock his head off. But, I mean, for me, I have a job to do, you know, and that's the, and that's the win by any means. So, either way, if he didn't talk trash, if he did talk trash, you know, it doesn't change for me what I need to do and what I need to go in there and do, and that's the win, and that's the look. Um, it's important for you, you know, just for your, you know, for your time and then, you know, just staying fresh in the ring. But um, I just want to stand in the in the eyes of the people and um, you know, letting them see me a lot more and let me fight a lot more. So you know, they, they see me on a consistent basis. Can you talk about why you've uh, been promoting yourself and how you see that going in the future and what you want to do as a promoter? Can you talk about that in the uh, past? Yeah, uh, right now, you know, I'm willing, I want to um, start a promotional company in the, in the near future real soon and, um, you know, basically promote myself, especially when I fight in Dallas. So, you know, I feel like I can promote myself in Dallas. Promote other fighters and other athletes as oh, well? definitely. In the future, yeah, promote other like, fighters right? and things like that. Especially, it's a lot of local guys and it's a lot of guys that's, you know, that's under the radar, you know, don't really be seen by big promoters because they don't have, you know, the, the big stature of the amateur background and they're not seen and they can fight. You know, there's a lot of guys that's part of the gym that, you know, we go tick for tack with, but, you know, they, they're not seen. They have no, you know, power source behind them to, to push them. Is that part of the reason you like training back at home as well? Uh, that and, you know, I like to be around my kids when I'm training too. You know, I don't think I can. I could, but I don't. I don't want to be gone seven, eight weeks, two months away from my kids, and you know, not seeing them. That's added motivation too. Just waking up in the morning, seeing my kids, and you know, coming home from training camp and playing with my kids. It's just a breath of fresh air. It's something different. Right? Uh, how did you, uh, you get into boxing originally? Oh, uh, my dad. My dad got me into boxing. We were always big time boxing fans, but he got me into boxing when I was 15 years old. I started a little bit late. Started as a hobby and ended up as a job. So. <laughs> Pretty Thank good you. job, right? Yeah. Not bad, man. Sorry when you're not getting hit as much. <laughs> yeah.